You know about direct grilling, cooking the meat directly over the fire. You know about indirect grilling, where you cook the meat next to the fire. The sear and slide method combines both techniques to deliver a steak that is crusty and charred on the outside, juicy and rare on the inside, with a wood smoke flavor that just won't quit. For steaks, I'm using these magnificent beef tomahawks, each one two pounds of pure carnivorous pleasure. And if you imagine a prime rib, a rib roast, so you've got the roast here, if you cut it into steaks and keep the entire rib bone intact, that's how you cut a beef tomahawk. Drizzle the steaks with extra virgin olive oil, then brush the oil, into the surface of the meat. Season the tomahawks with coarse sea salt. Why coarse salt? You want the crystals to remain intact during the cooking so they give you crunch when you bite into the steak. And next, cracked black peppercorns. Now turn the steaks over. Now for grilling, it starts with a classic indirect grill setup for a gas grill. That is burners on one side lit, burner on the other side unlit. That's where the indirect grilling will take place. But here's the twist. You pull out the fuel drawer and add these oak logs. And leave the grill lid open for a few minutes to give the logs a chance to light. In France, where I learned to cook, although not necessarily grill, the traditional accompaniment for steak was Bernays sauce, a temperamental sauce made with tarragon butter and egg yolks. Here's a Bernays butter that is virtually fail-proof. It starts with two tablespoons melted butter. To the butter, add a half cup of finely chopped shallots. Cook the shallots until just beginning to brown two to three minutes. Meanwhile, grate a couple tablespoons of genuine Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese into a stick of unsalted butter. And the butter should be at room temperature. Next, add chopped fresh tarragon. Tarragon, that herb that has wonderful licorice aroma. A few drops of fresh lemon juice and a few drops of cognac. Once your shallots begin to brown, take the pan off the heat and let the shallots cool to room temperature. Now cream the butter with the tarragon, parmesan cheese, and flavorings. Once the butter is creamed and the shallots are cooled, you can add them to the butter. And beat the mixture until soft and creamy. I've spread a sheet of plastic wrap out on a sheet pan. And now take your butter and mound it in the center of the plastic wrap. What I'm making here is known as a compound butter. And then spread the butter out into a rough log shape. Then roll it up in the plastic twist tight to make a log. I always keep some compound butter in my freezer. That way, whenever I grill a steak, cut off a few slices, I have an instant sauce. Now back to the grill. You can see that your logs have caught fire. And as always, we want to clean the grill grate. This time, I'm using a wooden scraper, which eliminates the small but nonetheless possible risk of a loose wire bristle winding up in your food. A lot of people like these wooden scrapers. We'll oil the grill grate with a half onion dipped in oil and rubbed across the bars of the grate. 
Now arrange the tomahawks on the grill grate. So we'll go one like this, and one like this. And this is the sear portion of the cook. We'll actually sear the steaks directly over the flaming logs. I'll close the grill to trap in the heat. Sear the steaks for about three to five minutes or until the outside is crusty and brown. We'll sear on both sides. Once your tomahawks are seared on the bottom, turn them over and sear the other side the same way. Once the steaks are seared on both sides, slide them over to the indirect section of the grill where they'll finish cooking. To go with the steaks, I've roasted some fingerling potatoes with garlic, rosemary, and olive oil. So we'll close the grill lid. Now we'll indirect grill the steaks until they're cooked to taste, about 20 to 25 minutes for medium rare. Okay, been 20 minutes. Take a look at those tomahawks. To test for doneness, you can either use the poke test, gently yielding, or to be scientific, lift up your steak. I'm using a Maverick PT55 waterproof instant read meat thermometer. 135 degrees, bingo. Transfer your steaks to a sheet pan with a wire rack. The wire rack will keep the bottoms of your steaks from getting soggy. And the roasted fingerling potatoes. I know you want to dive into these steaks right now, but it's always good to let the meat rest for a few minutes. It will relax and be more tender and juicy. And here's the Bernays butter. Just unwrap it, and you can cut a thin slice and melt it right on your steak. Take a steak on the cutting board, and then cut the meat off the bone, and we'll slice the steak. You can see how juicy and luscious that looks. The knife is gliding through this meat as though through butter. Transfer the steak to a plate. And then a spoonful of your roasted potatoes. The recipe will be on our website. Let's see how we did. Mm. This is outrageous. Exterior crusty and charred. The meat juicy and tender. The whole thing infused, perfumed with wood smoke. The slide and sear method is my new favorite way to grill steak. And that's nice. Very nice.